it's Hillary Tempest Sells. Today, we are going to be talking about ties. Ties, ties, ties. Um, I know I've said before, like I started out, I've said this several times before, like a million times before, like in every video, um, that I started out my resale journey um, selling ties, ties and jeans. And I picked ties because I thought they were going to be easier to learn about. They're small, they're compact, uh, <laughs> they will ship fast and cheaply. And, uh, you know, there's only like... It, Women's clothing, there's like a million designers, but the top tie sellers, there's only a few. So I thought, okay, it's going to be easier. So um, to that end, I thought I'd do a video about ties because I know a lot about ties now. So let's just start with uh, the brands, the brands that sell. Um, Xenia, Hermigillo Xenia ties, those sell, that's my biggest tie sale so far. Uh, Versace ties, uh, Gianni Versace. Uh, the Rush Limbaugh No Boundaries ties sell uh, very well, and um, you can usually find them really easily in a mess of ties because they're so hideous. <laughs> I mean, they're just so bright and gaudy um, that you can usually find them. And I just was, I went by the Goodwill and it was, these were like hanging behind a bunch of other ties and it was like, wait a minute. Um, these will usually sell for at least upward of $25. Um, I would, uh, I have two listed now together, I think for 50, um, and uh, they've been up for about a week, so we'll see how they do. First one, uh, when I first bought it, I couldn't make out what it was, uh, the designer, oh, did I show you the label? Um, I did not show you the label. So here is the label. And I could not make that out in the store, so I couldn't even look it up. So I was, I think I looked up no boundaries tie. Um, and I don't think I found, I don't know. But um, I couldn't find it in the store. But I thought somebody, for somebody to make that gaudy of a tie and put that gold tie, tie uh, that gold uh, keeper thing on the back, um, that has to be something. So I bought it, uh, got it home, and looked it up and realized when I saw that I was like I was looking at the limb I think that says Rush Limbaugh and I didn't even know he made ties um and then to find out that they have a pretty good resale value they are no longer manufactured uh and so the people that are really into him I guess really want his ties um apparently Trump ties tell sell very well too but I ain't buying those so um, Brooks Brothers also does really well. The only Brooks Brothers I have right now is a vintage Brooks Brothers. Um, and that is the label. Uh, they do well, but sometimes I found that I've sat on them a little long. So I usually only try to get them when they're kind of unique. Um, and right now they have a nautical line that has like anchors and big ships on them and uh, the retailing for about 140. So um, I'll keep my eye out for those at the at the thrift. And if they show up, I will definitely get those. Um, Robert Talbot is also a brand that sells pretty well. After all of the ones that I just mentioned, probably Robert Talbot is the brand that I sell uh, best that is just an ordinary uh, department store brand. I'm trying to find the tie to show you. Here we go. Um, I got this print. Uh, I've had this a while. I got this print because it just reminds me of like 30s motifs. Um, I don't think anybody else is all that thrilled for it. Uh, I'm not getting that much interest in it. And this is an older tie, uh, Talbot Studio for Nordstrom. And it's good to note that Talbot is with two T's at the end. Um, I think there is another Talbot, which is just one T. Um, but normally, I believe these these sell pretty well. Um, also, Vineyard Vines ties. Oh, that's like that's that's like my big bolo is to just to find a, a Vineyard Vineyard Vines tie. Um, of course, the higher end brands like Burberry. Gucci, Hermes, um, those will all sell well. Uh, I believe Christian Dior vintage ties sell well. Um, I have a Pierre Cardin vintage, vintage tie. And even though I wasn't nuts about the pattern, I got it because it's a thicker feeling tie. Um, 
Ties are usually made up of three pieces of fabric. There's your outer luxury silk fabric, and then there's your lining fabric, and then inside is usually like a piece of wool or something uh, that gives the tie sort of its heft um, and allows it to drape properly. And um, this one is just a slightly thicker feeling. Also, it's a, a, a narrower tie. Um, so I got this one, but um, that might have been a mistake. I don't know. What else? Uh, Jerry Garcia. Um, every Jerry Garcia tie I have had, and I think I've had three or four now, has sold usually within a month. Um, your mileage may vary. I don't know. Um, but uh, even like the one, the last one I bought that I was like, ah, should I buy it? It's kind of ugly. Um, I bought it and it took, I think it took a little, like maybe six weeks or eight weeks to sell, but it did sell. Um, and uh, you can usually get a, a pretty good flip on that. And to me, a pretty good flip on a tie is, you know, you pay a dollar and, uh, you know, before your fees are taken out, you made, you know, you sell it for 20, 22. Um, I've definitely had ties that I've sold for 10, for nine, um, I think even for eight. Uh, but mostly those were the ones that I got in the beginning before I really uh, decided to be more strategic about uh, what I was picking up. Um, novelty ties, uh, I have you know a couple of Looney Tunes ties um, that I got. These I got like very early on. Um, these has a lot these have a lot of the Looney Tunes characters on there. Um, I also have uh, this one with Sylvester and Tweety hiding in the Paisley. Um, I've had these for a long time and they keep going down and nobody is interested. Um, other novelty ties that have done well are ones that are, you know, for a cause. Um, like this one is World um, Wildlife Fund and it's the little hippos in the water. Um, I've had a number of of uh, either these World Wildlife Funds or I want to say it's UNICEF um, that gives uh, has a, had an art project so that kids could draw ties and then they put the design on the tie and, uh, and on the back it would say you know this tie is drawn by Brian H age 10 or something and I've done really well with those uh, they don't sell for a lot um, if you make your 20, uh, that's pretty good. So usually uh, if I find uh, ties that are like, sometimes I get them two for a dollar. Um, and so to me that, you know, making a few bucks off of that is cool. Uh, corporate uniform ties, I guess, is the, the right category for them. Um, I've done extraordinary. I wish I could find those all day long because I hardly ever have those for, for more than two weeks. Um, one of the first ties I got was for, I believe, the Hilton um, Hotels. And I priced, I put it on auction. It was so stupid. I put it on auction. It sold like in, in that first auction for like two bucks or something. That was so dumb. But I did want to try. I, the reason I had done that is I wanted to try auction. Um, and so at least, you know, I made my money back. You know, <laughs> I made my 50 cents back. <laughs> um, and and uh, um, I believe that was like, usually like, I think the hotel like had um, like three ties. I looked it up online and it's, you know, for Hilton hotel uniform tie. Uh, and it'll tell you like what the current tie is. And usually there's like two or three pieces of a uniform and maybe there's a couple of different options for ties. And so they can change it out every day. Um, and uh, I don't know what the rules are about like old, you know, if it's a past Hilton tie or whatever, but usually they kind of keep the design sort of similar uh, from year to year. So I think a lot of the people just like, I just want to wear a different tie or something that's, that I like better and they'll go online and find it, uh, for cheap. So, um, that was one I sold, I sold a Delta Christmas tie. Um, and I've sold a private jet company tie and one more, I can't remember what it was. Um, Ooh, I don't remember what it was. I think it was another airline tie or uh, something like that, or a hotel tie. Um, and those sold uh, fairly well, fairly quickly. Um, so usually when I go and I look at the tie rack, um, I look, I try to like pull out what's different or what feels different. Um, 
and I'll look at, at those and I'll look at the label. And most, if you find, you know, club room or dockers or whatever, you can just usually put those away. The best way to sell those is, you know, if somebody gives them to you for free and you can put them in a lot of 25 for whatever. Um, but I wouldn't buy them at the thrift. As far as what the tie material is made of, most of my ties are silk. Um, I do have two poly ties. Um, uh, this vintage tie is polyester. I'm going to show you this label. Uh, it's Brothers Handmade. Um, and it does not have an RN number or anything, but it does say that the funny thing is, is it says on here that it is Brothers Tie Silk Trading Incorporated. And then right below that, it says um, uh, polyester 100%. And then it also says made in Korea. Um, so that all of those, that information leads me to believe that this is a vintage tie, uh, probably in, probably made in the, uh, maybe seventies, early eighties. I don't know. The, the design of it seems sort of sophisticated and not, um, you know, really garish. Uh, so I'm not really sure, but I put it in as a vintage tie cause I figure it has to be at least 20 years old. Um, I think it's the I think it's the 70s. Uh, anyway, um, boop, 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 boop. Uh, where was I going with that? Oh yes. Um, so most of the ties I have are silk. Uh, two of them are poly. Um, on your eBay listing, it will ask you whether it's woven or knit. Um, I think those are the two options and it's always it's almost always going to be woven when you have a knit tie you know you have a knit tie uh, this is a vintage brooks brothers tie let's see it's brooks brothers maker i got it because i just hadn't seen an olive green tie and uh, i thought it was i thought it looked in really good shape and uh, i've had it for a bit so it must be that uh, nobody else is that thrilled about the olive tie but i think it looks quite dashing um the reason I brought this out is you can kind of see that there is uh, like a pattern, like a weave within the weave. There's like lines going down this way. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Um, when you see that on a tie, it is called a rep weave. Um, I will put down below what that means because I can't remember. But um, when you are typing up your, just your listing uh, in your title, you want to put that in your title because there are people that are looking specifically for rep weave ties and there is no place to do that within uh, your style listing choices that eBay provides you with. So if you have a tie that's rep weave or jacquard uh, or anything, you want to put that in the title so that that's part of your keywords. Okay, so uh, the next thing to talk about on ties is measuring and measuring a tie is basically uh, you fold it in half, you make sure that your the point of your tail end and the point, I think this is called the blade end, the front, uh, are lined up, and then you measure this while it's in exactly a half, and then you double your number. So this is probably about 28. So uh, then you would say, well, no, this is, this is probably about 29. Um, so then you would say that your um, tie is uh, 58 inches long, and 58 inches long is considered regular average classic. Um, and anything below is short, and anything above is long with 62 and above being extra long. So if you have a tie that is 62 or above, you want to put extra long in your title because again, that is something that people are specifically looking for. Um, so you measure your, your length and you double it while it's in half. And then, oh, I have a, I have a tape measure right here. I could just show you. Um, and also you want to measure from this corner here to this corner, and that gives you the tie width. Uh, boop, 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 boop. And this one is, as you can see, four inches. Um, and some of them will be like three and three and uh, three quarters, three and a quarter. Um, they can go in quarter inch um, increments. Uh, skinny is considered uh, 
uh, about two and a half, two point seven five, um, and below. And what the interesting thing is is that Brooks Brothers may decide that two and a half inches is a skinny tie, two and a half and, and below, whereas Joseph A. Bank may decide that you know two point seven five is a skinny tie. So. Um, I don't put that in the listing. I just write down the the length. So I'll write down 58L and then 4W. Uh, that's all the information. I don't put anything like in the description part that this is a skinny standard. There is uh, the option to choose that um, in your listings, uh, in your <clears throat> listing choices. And I will put it there if it's a you know wide tie or short tie or skinny tie or whatever. Mm -hmm. If there's anything notable to the tie, like the, the no boundaries, uh, you know, um, gold chain uh, tack there on the back. Uh, there's also a tie uh, that I sold fairly early on and I kind of kicked myself over because I knew it was special when I picked it up. Uh, but first of all, I paid $5 for it. And back in the day, I wasn't really paying anything like $5 for a tie. Um, and this was a Daniel Cremio, Crem um, C-R-E-M-I-E-U-X, I think, Cremio. Um, tie which was a seven fold tie i'm going to put a picture of the seven fold tie right here because it just had like things on the back it just looked like a lot of, of fabric and then also it had a distribution number on it so it said like you know seven of 50 or something and hillary you know, <laughs> I tried looking it up and, and I couldn't really find uh, one that had sold and 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 uh, not to find like how popular it was. And that should have been the indication. Uh, if you can't find anything that's sold like that, that you have something that's pretty unique. I do believe I listed it for like a hundred dollars and ended up taking an offer, my first offer of like 70 or 75 and I should have held out um, and I probably should have listed it for higher. Um, it was a beautiful silk tie, by the way. It felt fabulous. That was how I found it, run, rummaging my hand through the tie rack. And it was like, whoa, what's that? That just feels like butter. Um, uh, and uh, so hopefully I will find one of those ties again. <laughs> um, I'm always like, oh, is that it? Uh, because I want to, I want to, you know, appreciate it more this time than when I had it the last time. So uh, after I measure, I take my photos and I usually will, um, I roll it up. I take like a flat photo. I will, you know, sometimes take like the extended, you know, pull photo from the center. Uh, usually I'll do this if uh, this pattern on this tie is the same all the way up, but sometimes there's a different pattern to it. And so I'll usually do this. Uh, to, to show, you know, that there's different patterning toward the top of the tie. Um, and I usually use that one of these two photos as my first photo. And then a, uh, I'll do a flat photo um, and a back photo. And then I'll take photos of the labels. And, um, you know, I've seen people that they, you know, do, they tie the tie up. But I don't do that because once I get everything all I just want it to stay in this roll and that's how I store it um, so that it doesn't get wrinkled again. For the care and feeding of your ties, um, I make a, like my dry, my dry cleaning fluid. Um, I keep in this little spray bottle and um, it is uh, water, hydrogen peroxide, uh, like a literal drop of Dawn and some lemon essential oil. I tend to use lemon essential oil in um, a lot of my cleaning products because I just feel like a citrus scent just makes everything smell fresh and clean. Um, and I will take my tie, I will spritz this from a distance so all it's getting is misting. I'm not doing this because I don't want this to get soaked. I just want to mist it. And then I'll throw it in the dryer on low for about five to ten minutes. And when it comes out, it usually looks nice and fresh. Uh, however, sometimes if um, there's wrinkles or creases in it, I will have to steam it. Um, not often. And uh, then I store it in my drawer. These are the ones I just took out. <laughs> to, but they're most of them in rolls. And... Uh, that's how I keep them stored. And when I pull them out to ship them, uh, ties usually weigh about three to four ounces in a six by nine envelope. I don't, I don't uh, weigh anymore. 
I just, I just go with four ounces and um, I wrap the tie in tissue so that it's completely encased in the tissue and throw it in a six by nine envelope and mail it. Every once in a while, I will have to re-steam it uh, just because you know something happened in the drawer and things got all munched up. Uh, but for the most part, uh, once it's here, it's good to go once somebody buys it. And um, yeah, that is all about ties. Uh, did I forget anything? Ask a question down below if you have one. Um, have you sold ties? Have you had luck selling ties? Have you not had luck selling ties? I want to know. I want to know. Uh, tell me all about your tie, uh, <laughs> your tie woes, and your tie uh, wins. Um, My two uh, top selling ties have been the Zenya tie, which was like a I'm just going to show you here because it was so beautiful and I got it in April of last year and I don't think I listed it until like September or October because I couldn't find anything like it and uh, uh, it didn't even, you know, <laughs> I looked at Xenia ties and you know there were some that were selling for a lot of money and I really really couldn't figure out what to price it at and I couldn't find enough of a description and um, so what I ended up doing was uh, just listing it at a very high price. I listed it at 195 to see what would happen. And I had it for listed for a bit. I think I listed it in like September, maybe October, maybe even August. And I did not sell it until December, but somebody made me an offer of 175 And so I sold that tie that I had bought at a charity sale for a dollar. I sold it for 175 That is my win. The uh, Versace... Um, tie the Miami tie I have not sold that yet I get a lot of interest in it um, I have not gotten any offers on it I've made some offers on it um, and nobody's taken it there's a few listed but they haven't sold I did not have it up during the summer so I think maybe it might sell in the spring summer months um, it is the other ones that are listed I believe mine is currently priced lower I should double check and see if they've lowered their price um, but I think I could probably get like 75 for that tie. I'm not sure. Um, and then the next tie, uh, the next ties that I've sold have been the Talbot ties. Um, so that's how, oh, oh no, sorry, the Jerry Garcia ties and then the Talbot ties. Uh, have, those have been the, the biggest sellers for me. Um, I thank you so much for watching uh, the whole of this video. I hope uh, it was helpful. And if it wasn't, uh, go ahead and let me know that it wasn't. If it was, please give me a thumbs up uh, so that I know that you would like more content like this. And I would invite you to subscribe. Um, my channel, I talk about reselling. And if you like content like this, I'm still fairly a new channel. I just announced uh, my channel last week. So you may see 20 videos up, but I didn't announce it to anybody until last week because I wanted to have 20 videos before I made an announcement. I invite um, you to subscribe. And um, if you really like this video, go ahead and put a ring on it by clicking the bell and you will be notified the next time I have a new video up. Bing. Uh, until the next time, thank you so much. Keep selling. Bye.